Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Metaphysical Hour. I'm Julia Cannon, and today is September 29th, 2017, and I am so excited for our show today. We have some phenomenal energy people here that I just, oh my gosh, I had the wonderful, exactly, yeah, see? <laughs> I had the wonderful uh, pleasure of being in Hawaii with, and we we had such a fantastic time. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that, as well as QHHT and how it entered into the whole thing and all of our experiences. And, oh, my gosh, were we in a magical place. But um, uh, I think I'll go ahead at the top of the hour here. I will announce the classes that are coming up, and then that way – because we'll kind of refer to them, and then that way I don't forget to do it later, because after this, I mean, we're going to go in all kinds of directions, and I know I'll forget to do these basic things. So uh, we have coming up a, a, a whole lot of class, classes and a whole lot of stuff, and Suzanne can vouch, because she's going to be on, a, on yes. all of this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, this is where we do our... Uh, gosh, it's not around the world, but it's pretty close. Um, but we'll be in Australia the end of October. Let's see. It's, oh, I didn't write those dates down, but anyway, it's right at the end of October. We'll be doing a level three, a level two and a level one companion class there in Brisbane. And then <laughs> this is what we're, we're doing it's really fun. Uh, Suzanne's going to jet off to Perth <laughs> and do a, do a level one companion in Perth, the very first of November. Uh, Jane, who will also be with us in uh, Brisbane, she's going to jet down to Melbourne where she has family, and she'll be doing a level one companion uh, the fifth, yeah, the third to the fifth of November. Okay, then. Suzanne and I meet up again in Taiwan, in Taipei, and we will be doing level two and a level one companion there. And then Suzanne goes home, and I'm now going to go to Beijing, China, and do a level one companion <laughs> class. So we're just going to be doing a little bit of shuffling around and a little bit of traveling, but doing a whole lot of QHHT. <laughs> so, and these things, I just love these classes, and it's so fun to just take this all across the world. And so that's where I'm going to now bring in my my two wonderful, fantastic guests that I just love, love, love. Uh, what, what are we calling ourselves? The, the triad besties. <laughs> is that, what it is? <laughs> uh, that was, now that came from a session in Hawaii. So <laughs> it, we can do, I can legitimately say it. I mean, okay. It's like, um, anyway, I want to... Um, Bring forward now my very, 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 very wonderful guests. First, we have Suzanne Spooner, level three practitioner. You all know her. I don't need to, you know, yes, exactly. Yay! <laughs> she is so wonderful. Um, always fantastic energy and, and just, I love you. I love you, love you. And you. also new now to you guys is Kaya Wittenberg. Um, and we had the wonderful pleasure of all being together, like I said, in Hawaii. And Kaya, I'll let you give a little bit about your background. This is part of what this show is going to be about, is like how you even came into all this. But Kaya is a practitioner and um, has a lot of business background and everything. But this is this is why we were all together in Hawaii. Was this is where it all comes? You'll 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 figure it out. You'll connect the dots here pretty soon. So <laughs> anyway, welcome you guys. I'm so glad to see you again. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Super excited to chat. <laughs> yeah. We we have no problems chatting the three of us, do we? <laughs> no, none at all. We have some great chats. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so Kaya, let's yes. let's start with you um and your journey. What I love to do is hear people's stories and and their journeys and how they got here because you know, very few of us were born into this world of metaphysics and and here we are all you know, all connected and all know what we're doing. You might be, I don't know. I don't know your backstory. So, <laughs> so this is what I love. This is always a surprise to hear people's, how they got here, their journey. So if you want to, can you give a little bit about how you yeah, got yeah. here? <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Um, for me, the way things have, have evolved, it's been, it's been really interesting because I think um, 
innately, I might have that kind of mind that's very, um, I like to think in terms of organization and I, I work really hard on my business, my businesses. So being an entrepreneur takes up so much of my life. I, I'm really focused on doing that. And, and I have been for, for quite some time, but I've, I've discovered that along the way, in order to get a deep sense of fulfillment, I need mechanisms where I can check out at the end of the day and, and kind of refresh myself and get a sense of renewal. So then the next day I can come and I have energy. I'm happy. I'm excited what I'm doing. And I'm not just like, you know, burnt out from just working and working and working. I love to work, but the, the longer I've gone into and learned more about the metaphysical, the more I've, I've gained such a, geez, I guess such a, a sense of underlying joy in my life that's, that's helped tremendously. It started off with like, she's back like reading Neil Donald Walsh conversations with God, got my mind thinking about a different paradigm, spirituality right. instead of just religion. And there were a lot of great questions to really ponder. So I sat up at night awfully like thinking about existence and wondering if there was really more than what people think there is and if religion is what it is and if you're supposed to do things and you have to do things or maybe if this is it, this is my only life and mm -hmm. <laughs> then I'm dead and then there's no more of me. I mean, people think like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's always been this inane sense of curiosity to sort of figure things out and find a belief system that's really empowering. I think that's what it's really been about. And that's what I've been on the search for. So along the way, I, I kind of discovered um, the law of attraction got to be really popular and the secret came out. Yeah. And back then when it first came out, there were DVDs, DVDs were the thing. And, and, and I, I heard the secret and it just really resonated with me. So I bought 50 of the DVDs and I just gave them out to friends. <laughs> you need to listen to this. Why does that not help you? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was um, working a lot of sales training and influence and persuasion and just being a better communicator at that point when that was part of the, the platform that I was going and we were learning about the secret. And I was like, you know, I think I want to go more in this direction of like secret oriented mindset and see how that helps evolve my business, my life, my goals and everything. Maybe that's the undercurrent. Maybe that's the driver of success. And it's not what I think it is about kind of sort of money and status. And, and having things and materialistic things. Mm -hmm. That was, that was onto something there. <laughs> <laughs> so a friend of mine is like, you know, I just met somebody, I think I was, I was talking to them for a couple of days and they said, you know, now that I know you, you need to read this book, um, you know, Many Lives, Many Masters. And this was like maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago or something yeah. like that. And then I was like, I devoured the book in case. Yeah. And, and I got to thinking, wow, this, Hmm. This isn't the only life. There's actually interesting things about past lives, future lives, all of that. So that content was a bit interesting. But then I found there wasn't that that much more. It was hard without the internet really expanding, and there weren't that many. There wasn't a lot of news sources out at that time. So I was kind of like wanted to learn more about this. And then I, I started learning more about channels and and channeling and and how a higher energy can come into um a human transmitter which is actually like the most efficient way of relaying messages which makes sense right it shouldn't be technology because technology can be manipulated but if it's the human source there's the connection and the nuances and the language and, and that the connection to our society that can they can merely bring power to those messages from um, from a higher place. So I started like learning more about channels and reading channels, and then end up getting um, referred to. I said, well, I, I found QHHT and a friend of mine up in Canada who is like an expert with crystal grids, and she said that we had a life together in Atlantis, and told me all about this life and being a priest at the Temple of Mu and all these sorts of things that sounded a little bit wild at the time, but but cool. Like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I can, I can see I myself. I can do that, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. So, yeah, I know, you'll, you'll love QHHT. She was really telling me it's amazing, and, you know, you should really connect with Suzanne and just go up to Iowa, you know, and schedule a session with her. So, like, I don't know, within a couple of days, I'm like, messenger, 
Suzanne, <laughs> you know, any time available? I really want to get in. It was like, bam, bam, bam. Something opened up and I was able to come in right away. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. It's just like, uh, and, and, um, and it was, it was such a cool, amazing, mind blowing experience that it changed. Everything changed after I had the session that, that was like, you have these pivot points in life where once you breach that point, you pivot, you're in a direction and your life is never the same after you've, you've just like opened something magical. And that's what I felt like opening up to QHHG was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> and, and that's what, that's one of the first things that I like to point out to people is like when people say, Oh, it's life changing. So, and you said, yeah, it shifted everything. Can you give some examples of things that just, you know, yeah, it opened things up, but cause sometimes it's hard to put your fingers on exactly what, happened <laughs> yeah, absolutely well you know the, the part about i mean there's so much I, um but i can i can just tap into like the questions after because they're they're so tailor-made to exactly what you're wondering about in your life and you're 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 you maybe you've had these questions your entire life but you never felt you could get a good answer for them because they may be kind of a little out there or um I mean, other people can't relate to them because it's something personal. I mean, it's your experience. So to get that authentic information from a, your higher self knows you better than anything else here. I mean, everything from diet to getting stuck on a yoga pose to pursuing passions without fear to, I mean, like just all the things I had my curiosities about, I had amazing guidance on, like amazing. And so I think that that was very relevant, but that's only just a small piece. I mean, there there was there was the past life connection. There was the uh, the Arcturian Council member connection. There was the out of worldly stuff, messaging, feeling the energy actually coming through my body, which is quite an experience to feel like you have so much to say and you just want to get it out. And you feel so empowered and you feel so alive and you feel so good talking that like you just don't want it to end. Yeah, that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> you know, if I can add, um, Kaya spoke so much so fast um, during his session that the poor guy was hoarse at the end of the at the end of the recording. <laughs> I think that happened in Hawaii too, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I, all that all that energy coming in too. <laughs> yes, yes. Afterward, I feel like <laughs> I'm like. Uh, <laughs> 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 it is. That's, that's. I mean, that's that's you. Um, that shows that gives you a taste of just how powerful and how big you are because that's just more of you coming in, you know, and so. Like you said, it's empowering. It is. It's yeah. when you get that bigger picture. Yes, yes, it, it, it was amazing. Um, and and then the part about following up and listening to your session again and again and not, mm -hmm. I think that's really important because it, like you, you have that experience and then it's so resonating. It's almost like, oh, do I need to listen to it again? But when, when you say, yes, I do, and you do, you always get something from it and you feel a little better. And, and even after the session, this was so cool. I felt like after any session, I mean, now I've done multiple, every time I do a session and afterward, I feel this sense of like personal magnetism where we're just, <laughs> people are coming up and they're just more curious and they wanna talk to you or they wanna do something nice for you. And then you wanna do something nice for them. And it's this wonderful cycle of positive energy that, that starts with the QHHT session. It, 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 for me, it's proven 1,000% because I've seen it happen again <laughs> and again and again and again. <laughs> well, and that makes sense, though, because I'm getting this visual of, you know, it's more of you coming in, and it's like you extend your, your it, it extends everything out. I want to say aura, but they're like, they're like, that's not the right word. So I don't know what the word is, but it's like it extends everything out, and that's probably what, and because that's so pure and positive then that's you're going a like attracts like so it's just that's probably where all that yeah i just that's just the visual of me trying to interpret you know what that. you know what i what i see in sessions um is that they're they're bringing in so much of their own true pure energy 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like it's hard to contain it within a physical body, right? And you know, Kai is such a great example of this because he's, you know, he's a wah, wah, wah after a session, you know, because there's so much energy that's been coming through. But and like with 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 all sessions, and I think that's it. The key to <clears throat> maintaining that and working from this new paradigm of expanded energy is then to keep listening to that recording and. You know, when, when I'm in my interview mode with the high cells um, during these sessions and I've asked them, you know, why is it important for the client to listen to that recording? They say, you know, it's it's so multifold. It's because they're getting their own answers and their information from themselves, not from me or from anybody else, which makes it very, you know, true and valid. Um, and it also helps the left mind understand that there's so much more beyond it. The, mm-hmm. you know, the conscious one has so much more besides that one aspect. But they say that it's the vibration and frequency of the actual voice that actually affects the cells of the physical body and the energetic body. And so by listening to um, that recording, it gets everything into alignment. So it, it, there, this this recording is, they say, um, layered with infinite uh, layers of coded information. And so you think you're listening to the words and you are, but every other part of you is getting more and more from this. It just makes you bigger and better and uh, more in alignment. Um, so it is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, I think Laura Casto referred to it like a piece of gold that you give your client. Yeah. And, and it, it oh, is. Yes, yeah. yes. It really is because and, and it's a treasured piece of themselves, you know, and like you said, that frequency, and that's what I was getting when Kai was talking. It was saying this stuff's in layers. It's in layers. You, that's why you have to listen to it over and over. <laughs> and so there's so many layers. You may think, oh, yeah, I remember everything on there. But every time you listen, you'll get something else from it. So it, it's kind of like how mom's books were written. They were written in layers, too. You know, that's just. That's how the information comes through now. And it's a matter of allowing that. Um, they're, they're telling I wanted to say, you know, just doing it. But they said, no, allowing it. Allowing, going through the process and allowing those layers to come in. And, oh, man, the visual I've got right now. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it has to do with what you're saying, the codes. You know, it's like it's encoding your system. So it's just let it happen. Um now, Suzanne, you mentioned something about the, the the left mind and the right, you know, coming all together and everything. Kaya, would, would you say you were analytical? Did you have an issue with any of that, the the left mind doing some questioning in the in the first session maybe or anything like that? Or? Yeah, like I, um, I, w- I would say like I had – there were there were fears that were surfacing in the beginning. There were anxieties. I mean, I knew I, knew I wanted to do the session 100%. Mm-hmm. But then I, I – you have that little voice like, oh, what if I say something stupid? What if I say something embarrassing? You know, and then, and, and, you know, so you hear that voice a little bit sometime, but I knew I wanted it. So I was like, all right, quiet down, little voice. Let's do the experience. <laughs> and let's see. And then you have it. And then you realize this is the one thing. Your <laughs> higher self has your back. Always. You don't have to worry. Ever. Yeah. Your higher self always, always, always has your back. And it's the greatest thing because when the session was over, I was like, oh, there's no way. Like those fears are totally unfounded because you're only going to get positivity out of it. You're going to get what you need. You're not going to get any of the garbage. All those fears, all those are constructions. They're not helping you at all. And the higher self only wants to help you. So Mm -hmm. that put that to rest. I love that you said that they've got your back because that's literally the first time. I mean, I did so many sessions with mom, but there was a lot of them before she started connecting with the, with the SC, with the higher self. And so the first time we did the one where, where she, where we're doing that, I had been getting messages. I'd been hearing things for a while. And then when we did that, it was like it all connected for me. And it was like, and I could feel them behind me. And that's what's so funny. When you said they got your back, they do. They were behind me. I could like feel them. And, and I was like, oh, that's who I'm always hearing. <laughs> it made the connection for me. And I realized, oh, they're, it's right here. It's always, they've always right here. They got me, you know? <laughs> so. 
Well, you know, and if I can add to that, um, you know, just yesterday I had a phenomenal session. Great, 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 wonderful man. And, you know, I, what he said is what we hear often in sessions and it, it speaks just to that is that as he was writing down his lengthy list of questions, <laughs> um, he was hearing the answers, you know, and, and he's like, no, you know, like he was trying to like, I don't want to know the answer yet. I'm going to go to the session and, and you know, <laughs> I know I hear that all the time, you know, but and it's so funny because that part of us is yep. always so present with us. It's just, you know, our focus, are we going to listen to it or not? And, you know, it is, it is so funny because, you know, they're like, no, 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 I don't. And then one of their questions on their list inevitably will be, how can I have easier and clearer connection? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just listen. I, <laughs> get out of your own way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I can also uh, state, uh, for the record, um, if Kaya had any fears in his session, it was not visible. It was he. <laughs> well, that shows, but like even in your city, that shows how much goes on inside up here. Oh, yes. Not, oh, yeah. It's not raw, cool. Hey, got this or anything, but inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love talking about that because that is actually what I see as a huge leap in evolution that we're experiencing. And as, as practitioners, we get to witness this in every session where the left brain of the mind is trying to, um, you know, figure out where it is in relation to this right side. And what the high self tell me in sessions is that we're in this great merge of the left and the right side of the brain. And because of that and because of where we're at in the shift, people are feeling, um, they feel as if they're somewhat aware during a session. Now, their left brain can get that really whipped up and say, oh, I'm not under deep enough and I'm just making this up. But what is actually happening is that left brain is learning how to merge to the right brain and be one. And I had a high self this summer say, you know, that's normal. You normally have clear and easy access to all of this knowledge were coming out of the illusion that there was separation and that you had to do something extra special in order to get that connection. So in the midst of a session, it can feel annoying. Like you, you know, you're kind of, you know, minding this argument in your head or, you know, I'm asking a question and you know the answer, but um, you know, there's that little voice that says, oh, you can't say that. Or, you know, are you sure you want to say that? And you have to like quiet that down and then just roll with it. Um, and where it, it can feel a little annoying in the session, that is actually, I think, huge, ginormous work in showing ourselves how we blend these two sides of our mind. And that's the catalyst to where we're going. And so I think that those of us that are having sessions now that are, you know, going through this QHHT experience, they're like having, they're like the rocket boosters into 5D and beyond. And because they're understanding how to manage that internal argument and, and blend these two sides of the brain, they'll be more easy, uh, more easily able to uh, help others as we're making this jump to the new earth. Completely agree. It's like the, mm. in the beginning on mine, it kept it kept coming, in and I just had to just keep telling it. It's just a game. Let's just let's just look and see what happens. I had to do a lot of that. And it's like, what does it really matter? You know, what, you know, and stuff. And then finally it started realizing the conscious part started realizing, Hey, this is pretty cool. You yeah. know, it's pretty cool to be That's allowed in on this thing. I think there was just a, a I think the conscious mind and the ego, cause you did such a wonderful uh, session that time where the ego talked and everything. I think it's just afraid of losing its identity. And that's why it comes in there. And it's like, Oh, I gotta be, gotta do my thing. But once it realizes that it can be an integral part of the whole thing, and then once you allow this, it starts a, helping make it possible on the conscious when you're awake. And right, so right. then it goes, you know, this is okay. I think I'm going to let this happen. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Did you, is that kind of what you found, Kaya? Or? Yes, yes. I, I, I agree with everything that Suzanne just said so succinctly. Um, it, it's really interesting where we're going right now with the integration. And um, yeah, you know, this is kind of cool. I just the, the thought about it that came in into these sessions when now, you know, 
as we're practitioners, we're seeing more and more people are coming in and they're, they're pretty aware of what's happening, but they're just setting that side, um, you know, the, that, that part of the analytical mind, the mind that's questioning things, it's still there, it's listening, um, but it's just kind of set aside and allowing that other part, the all-knowing part, to participate, and there's more of a, a unity and homogenousness working through that. And that, that's kind of interesting in, the, in your day-to-day life, how you can operate more in conjunction with your higher self to get the most out of your day-to-day walking life, you know, and you see, well, if I can do this in my sessions and I can help other people get that, why not incorporate this in my day-to-day life and, and really look at everything as, as, as a positive gift, you know, and spinning and framing things so that they serve you in the highest level possible using your imagination to do that instead of, and this is like a big topic that I love to talk about. It's just because it keeps coming up. It's like, using your imagination to store things in your mind for the positive so that you can get the maximum benefit. Um, that, that's what was just resonating to me and just keeps coming up. And if we all deliberately do this and we're all taking all of these events and it's just a, a, a storehouse of positivity, that positivity is going to come back like a nuclear reactor and power us up into the 5D even faster. It's just such a beautiful message and it's such a beautiful <laughs> process. I want you to be more specific about that because we actually you you we did a video with you talking about that because that came up in that dinner that we had when you were you were coming to it and everything and and you just kept specifically going well I got to take this from here and put it over here and it was just like oh here <laughs> just drop and everything so can you be cuz what you just said was really grand but it's a little vague so yes. can you get very specific like you did in the video because that is really cool it's yes. very important like you said i think it's very important information yeah and now i can give the specific example before because it's a pretty good one um mm-hmm. just an example of the choices that we face in life sometimes you 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 face a choice and you think it's at the expense of another choice um so you know I do this, but I'm going to lose on that. Okay, I'm conflicted. Oh, you know, my mind's freaking out. So, for example, I've got a great dinner coming up with some amazing people, um, and I want to be on time. I want to show that I'm proper, that I am responsible, that I am Kaya. I'm a business guy. Respectable. <laughs> did, did we freeze up Kaya? I think so. you Come on back, Kaya. Come, uh, come. Uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> we're finished <laughs> this fly <flight> too. <laughs> so, so, I'm hopping in the car and, uh, you know, driving along this beautiful ocean in Hawaii and the sun is setting. We're in, um, we're on the west side of the island. So, you get the beautiful sunset over the water. And I'm feeling this attraction as I'm driving. I'm noticing this beautiful sunset it's coming off to the side. And um, in, in Miami, we, the, where I'm from, you know, the sun's always rising off of the ocean. It's not setting into the ocean. You know? So West Coast is kind of special to me. It's a little bit different. And I'm feeling this attraction to the sun setting. But that part of my back of my mind is saying, got to be on time. Don't want to disappoint people. They're waiting for me. <laughs> and then as I'm driving, I see this like, the sign that says it's something like paradise sunset rest stop or something like this, you know, like, <laughs> how can you turn that down? <laughs> you know, it's like, mm, beautiful sunset. Mm, let's see. Uh, late for dinner. Da, 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 da. What do I do? I turn over, <laughs> pull up in the rest stop. And I'm sitting out there with a group of people and I'm watching the sun I'm taking my picture, you know, maybe getting a selfie in here, you know, getting the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt great, you know, and in that moment, it was natural. And that's where my attraction was drawing me to resist that attraction. Uh, wasn't the right thing to do. I felt like I needed to em- embellish that moment to feel it. It made me really happy, you know, and I was just, okay, I had my moment. I got back in the car and then, then I was thinking to myself, all right, now you're faced with a choice, right? How are we storing this experience? And, and as humans, you know, there's a couple different ways we tend to do things. What's pretty common and what I've done quite a bit in the past is said, oh, now I'm back to the real world. Now I got to get into this dinner. Oh my God, that took too much time. Now I'm late. I've just taken that wonderful experience and I've put a negative definition onto it as something that's made me late. 
you know, does that serve me? Am I going to get a positive benefit from that? Mm. I don't. So, <laughs> so how about <laughs> creating a positive belief that I'm in Hawaii, that I just experienced something that's amazing, and I'm gonna have a great story to tell at dinner, and I imagine everybody happy to see me. Nobody's upset looking at me saying, you're late. You know, it's everybody smiling and giving me a big hug, and it's no worry. And that's the vision that I'm holding on to, and that's how I'm storing that experience. Now, what if we did that all the time? What if we did that with everything in our life? What if we're just relentlessly attaching positive meanings to everything, even in the face of what can be the most negative thing imaginable. You know, it's possible, I guarantee it, and, and it would make the world a better place. It makes you a happier person. So I've, I've really made a conscious effort to make this a priority in my life of just relentlessly creating positive meaning to my experiences. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's, what they, it's all an illusion anyway, so it's going to be whatever you attach to it. So make it whatever it is you want it to be. See, that would be one of the ways where they say we create a reality. Well, isn't that, that's it right there. It's like, okay, it's happening. You may have created the situation. Now, what are you going to do with it? Yes. So now what, here, here's the other side, okay, of that story. We were at the restaurant <laughs> and we're watching this beautiful sunset and we're taking pictures and just because we've got a table that's close to where we can, you know, it's outside and where we can see it. And we're just like, oh, man, it's 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 so sad that Kaya is missing this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish you were here where he could see that. So so see, it was like it was wonderful that you got to see it because and then and we were all enjoying it, too. And then what happened when you walked in? Everybody was happy. It was. <laughs> it was like this wonderful connection uh, yeah. and an amazing dinner and then meeting Joan and the dolphin yeah. experience and then, you know, shifting our realities into all. It was just it was an amazing, beautiful evening that I won't forget ever. Amazing. So everything worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about that, because that's why I wanted to go with that was um, our dinner. We It was with uh, another practitioner, Frank Fleeks. And he was introducing us to Joan Ocean, uh, who does all these amazing workshops over there. She's uh, with the dolphins, and then she'll even take go to other places and do whale swims and stuff. And and um, you know, and, and first Frank was like, "Well, you have you ever swam with the dolphins?" I was like, "Well, yeah, I did once. You know, I was on a cruise." And I was like, "But that was like a closed in area." He goes, "Oh no, no, that's not swimming with the dolphins." <laughs> and I goes, "I mean, in the ocean, out in." I'm like. Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> no, never done that. So then they were teasing us with that and they just kept bringing it up. And it's like, well, there's a boat going out on Friday. <laughs> that was right before we were going to be leaving. <laughs> you know, that's, my, my first thought is, oh gosh, you know, that's the day that we leave, you know, but we don't leave till late at night. You know, right. I, I started going into all the reasons why that wouldn't work out, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm like, God, swimming in the ocean with the dolphins and Joan Ocean and all my peeps, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, we it became a, we had, had to, over. yeah, and see, but, and, and up until then, I'd only actually been in the ocean once before that, because I have, I had this great, great fear of, of oceans, of bodies of water that have living creatures in them, yeah. um, that doesn't <laughs> resonate with me, and so clear Swimming pools is what I like. I love being by the ocean. I love being around the ocean. But getting in the ocean, all I would ever do is go in maybe ankle deep, maybe just a little bit further than that, you know, because it's like that. I can see through that. Yes. And and where I did it before, it was like in the uh, Caribbean where the water is crystal clear so you can see. And it's like, okay. But and here they're they're talking about going out and swimming with the dolphins and, and doing all this. And I'm just like okay uh but then that's to see there's there we are again that's where we you know do i want to deny myself exactly this oh you know what do i do what do i do and do i give into my fears and and deny myself this possibility of this wonderful experience 
or do I, you know, what do I do? And so, and even the day before, uh, we're doing a session and they were talking about how all the dolphins were going to be there. They're welcoming us and everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm going, I will be on the boat. I can't guarantee that I will get in the water yet, but I'll be on the boat. <laughs> when it came time, and it was so funny because we were going out there and Suzanne said, she goes, are you going to go? And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> and then, and I was planning to put all the safety gear on. I just got in and <laughs> just went and it worked. Oh my gosh. You were, yes, it was such an amazing experience. Oh, if everybody needs to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, you know I, I've shared this with you, but when I, you know, I had my snorkel mask on and I'm, you know, watching them all around, I think um, out loud through my, snorkel tube I said I love you I love you I love you thank you thank you thank you probably a million times it was yeah, and and yeah. to hear the hear the sonar you know I'm like am I am I hearing things you know I'm like oh my gosh you can hear their sonar yeah the you first know? one that did that I, I heard something I'm like what and I looked over here and there was a dolphin under me I'm like oh my gosh this is so cool <laughs> And, and just to be with you guys, you know, and we've had, you know, this amazing, I mean, who in the heck goes to Hawaii to have meetings? You know, okay, that's just, yeah, not normal. Uh, well, but actually, I, I was there, I was there working. I think Kaya was there working. <laughs> well, you were there working. We were all working, and then we decided to have meetings at the same time. Yes. So it was, a, it was what I called a workcation. Yeah, okay, well, I would like more of those in that location. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> But you know that that's it. You know, you, you're just taking this all in, and you're with this fabulous group of friends and new friends, and um, you know those amazing creatures are welcoming you into their environment, and you're so supported by the buoyancy of the salt water that you know. Gosh, you know, I am I am so grateful that we took that decision and went yeah. for it. And it, it that changed me in ways I'm still trying to fathom. And, you know, it's just like that. You know, if you just make those yeah. positive yeah. decisions to how you're going to view things, it's just so beautiful how things unfold for you in the best light possible. Absolutely. I had the, I had the similar experience with it, similar to Julie. I'm not... I'm not great. I'm not a great swimmer. I tend to just sink. Like, you know, you're in high school or something and you're trying to float yeah. and everybody's floating. I'm like, I don't float. I sink. <laughs> so I think I felt, all right. It's all that muscle. <laughs> <laughs> and the magical moment. I, I, I'm there and, you know, I'm in and I'm looking down and I'm wondering if they come and all of a sudden, 30 dolphins in every direction surrounding me making those beautiful noises. I got, I got so excited. <laughs> the water's coming in and I'm kind of choking and a little bit drowning. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I felt the love. I, I felt the energy. And it's, I knew I wasn't going to drown legitimately. So I'm up. You know, <laughs> I breathe with a thing and then I came down. <laughs> You're just getting a salt water, uh, whatever cleansing. <laughs> but I knew they'd come back, and when they'd come back, I'd be more adjusted, and hopefully, I wouldn't like drown myself a second time. And uh, it, it was okay. <laughs> they came back again and again and again with us, and it was just wonderful. So the fear was removed. <laughs> Everything was great. <laughs> oh, it was. When we got back on the boat, the one of the um, crew members made a comment that that was very unusual to be able for the dolphins to be that chilled out for that long in one one place where they could just stay. Usually, they have to keep hopping around, finding them and following them and stuff. And and they and we were there for like at least an hour, probably just just enjoying them and and they us, I think and. And but that's what the session the day before had said. You know, it's like they were what they were waiting for us. And so here, <laughs> it, was, it was so wonderful. But when he said that, anytime I hear things like that, this is unusual. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that, that's so unusual for this for this crowd, right? right? 
Well, you know, and and we have the great Joan Ocean with us. So, you know, if there's anything that's sending the beacon signals out, you know, we're... we're well, and also right before, uh, Captain Mike, remember what he did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that yeah. cool? Yeah. So yeah, he did he, he, this beautiful yeah. welcoming ceremony with, um, you know, beautiful words and, um, uh, was it a didgeridoo? Was that what that instrument was? It was probably, it was that or it was similar to that, but it was like a great big, it, it looked like one, but not as long. I don't yeah. know what it was. <laughs> well, he, well, he was masterful at it. Um, so, I mean, he gave us this great blessing before we went out and um, great gratitude to the dolphins in the ocean and, and all the animals. And um, I don't know. I mean, ridiculous. I mean, I, I kept saying that the whole trip. The whole trip was just ridiculous. <laughs> I know every time we everything we'd look at. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so pretty. And it's like you know, it, it gets to be where I mean, that's that's cliche after a bit because it, I, it is. It's like you said, this is just ridiculously everything. <laughs> so. I knew I hit that mark when my kids stopped texting me back. You know, they're they're like, we're done with you now. This is we're okay. You can only say so pretty so many times and make it be effective. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I think we we've decided to have all of our meetings now <laughs> there. <laughs> well, you know, and that, let's, let's let's talk a little bit about that because we it, we all notice this. Um, you know, maybe I don't. It, it, you know, it's Lemuria. It's tropical. The oceans there. The land is you know volcanic and sacred. You know, and so. Th and we're in a, you know, a great pod of friends and, but our creativity and our ideas, you know, we really were just, it, it was a creation explosion mm -hmm. in these meetings. And, you know, I, I'm so excited, you know, as these things start to manifest to how, how it shifts, but, you know, it was so easy to create there. And, um, you know, it's a little bit perplexing to me you know when we all dealt with this we all you know anybody that that gets into that real great high you know you kind of have a hangover when you come back and i'm like i need to figure out a 5d hangover cure you know <laughs> because do we want one i mean well it's not a hangover i mean it's just like can we just stay on the high yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I would like to, and I think that's where we're at. I think we're mm -hmm. we're 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 absolutely aware of what we yeah. feel like when we're in that pool of energy, and so now to get a little bit out of it and go a little bit more dense feels, ugh, you know. And so you know, so it's it's how you know if you're in, um, I don't know, if you're surrounded by people that aren't in that vibe, um, it's how to keep yourself up above that a bit and not, um, not fall into the murk and the muck of it. Right. And I think, you know, we all have had our opportunities to work our ways through that. Um, but you know, our definite plug in place is why. <laughs> and, and additionally to that, a, a, a purpose of us, of us all meeting together in Hawaii was to create constructive mechanisms that not only help us stay into it, but all practitioners, all clients, all people out there to take that amazing experience and energy that we already talked about that you have after that magnetism and to allow that to continue into your life. And, and we're working on some really cool things in the future to be able to create that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was such an amazing thought. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want that back, you know, like, <laughs> reframe the mind. That's what it is. It's reframing. It's showing us in actuality what's happening here. <gasps> oh, this is so cool. I Done. love it. I love it. You don't yeah. know what's happening, Kaya. You keep freezing at these points. And so that's the that's them showing how, because you're t right as you said, it's reframing the mind and then it froze. And so it's like, that's all it is. You take that free shot. <laughs> what? Yes. I, I see. I can't get enough of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
there's helpers sending the message out right as we speak. I mean, the, the thing that I've learned is like th through our sessions um, and our collaboration, it's not just us. You know, there's there's a whole <laughs> there's a lot of powerful energy behind this, behind our movement, behind what we're setting our sights on achieving and advancing and growing and ascending. And it, it is powerful. And, and pointing at things like that out, which would normally be noticed as a coincidence, is no coincidence. You know, we know that these are beautiful. I, I call them as beautiful beacons of light along the way where higher self and our guardians and our energies and, and um, other other versions of ourselves are like illuminating paths for us. And it's, it's just a re it's um, it's an affirmation of just to keep going, continue. That was important. Dwell, bring energy into that. It's wonderful when you take the moments and you do recognize that. And why not take that and recognize that more in your life when you see something that's a coincidence, that's positive. Stop, take a moment, point it out, think about it, and bring even more energy into it. It's yeah. amazing. Well, that's what they say. Is, you know, it's the awareness. And as you, you know, when you point it out, then that's acknowledging. And so that's making you more aware. And then as you keep doing that, then you become more and more aware. And that's how you build that muscle. And it's just allowing more in. Um, but, yeah, when it happened twice, it's like, okay, this is something. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I bring their energy, their frequency up a little bit. To, to yeah, yeah, okay, we're going to do some yeah. little. <laughs> uh, Kaya, real quick. Um, now, you've mentioned that you are a practitioner. So you took, uh, you took the online course and then you took the companion course. In yes. Sedona. Uh, yes. Do you want to talk about that a little bit about your experience and maybe because we've got a lot of companion courses coming up. And yes. so that might be really good for some people that are taking the online course now to, to hear your experience or hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to elaborate that. Um, you know, I, you know, having a really busy, active life with a lot of things going on, you know, I, I, I chart my life out. I'm breaking every half hour of my life every Saturday. Saturday or Sunday, I'm planning my life out in half hour chunks for the week. And I just need to because I have a lot of responsibilities and working on a lot of different things. So um, in, in terms of uh, when I'm looking at the, uh, at, at, the, at the way to approach the education and the training, like, first of all, once I did my session on myself, I realized I have to work on others with this. It's such a powerful, powerful tool. And it's going to become a huge part of my life. I just knew that at my core. And I do want to do everything I really can within my power to do that. And I see myself as having a lot of power, a lot of inertia, a lot of motivation, a lot of desire. So for me, it was just automatic. Like now that the classes were um, were offered, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. I can actually do this technique and, and take it to the next level instead of just having the sessions on my life. I knew I had to do it. And, and then so the question became, how do I what's the what's the best way moving forward and to do something online <laughs> yes online so you can take it in your own time span you can <laughs> if you need a break you can <laughs> go ahead yes. It's hard to <laughs> yes and for me i have to do it at the end of my day at night because um Basically, that hour before I go to sleep, I tend to have dreams about everything that I'm thinking about. So I love to fill my, my mind with metaphysical guidance, higher wisdom. Go really general. Stay away from the specific before you go to bed. If you're thinking about a bill, or that's, the, <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do. Go very general about life, existence, consciousness. And um, those, the course was great for that. So it served its purposes in educating me, also opening my mind. Uh, putting me into a beautiful state before bed, uh, it, it and and allowing me to take breaks and go at my own uh, at my own pace. So the online part of it was fantastic in terms of the structure. And then the bonus is Suzanne was teaching in Sedona. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, just one of those normal places to to have. So you know, just amazing to go to partake in the class to experiment with your classmates and go much deeper with this with this really you know with people that are in the same position as you that have that desire to learn and experiment and grow and then you, then you go and you experience this and you get your feedback in class the next day in this magical place i mean it was it was incredible it was 
it was amazing. I couldn't have been happier with the overall process. And it, as luck turned out or as, as synchronicity would have it, I, I ended up doing my session. The head of the bed was at one of the most powerful uh, vortices, vortices in Sedona. <laughs> of course. <laughs> We would expect nothing less from you. <laughs> and the energy was coming in and going through me and grounding into the earth. And I was really feeling it. And it was really powerful. And yeah. And afterward, it was like 10 solid days of that magnetism where I was getting good news. New pe people are coming up to me. There were new opportunities. It was like the magnet was on like full speed after going through the companion course and, and going through the, the class that Suzanne was teaching. And not only that, she, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, um, a lot of strong tips that were really impactful um, later on, especially this one, Suzanne, you know, we, we touched base a little bit on the dark negative energy, which is a reality because, you know, there is positive, there is dark and people kind of get hung up on protecting themselves from the dark a lot. And thinking and thinking and thinking and wearing different kinds of amulets to protect themselves and things like that. Suzanne spelled it out pretty clearly. She's like, listen, whenever there's something dark or negative that's coming to you, I just open my heart and I just send love out to it. Just And if you're experiencing any of that as you're working through any situation at all, just send love out. You send love out and that's the solution. And I guarantee you, you're going to get a great result. And that works so, so well. I mean, that was that just in and of itself. So simple, makes so much sense, but such a great cure to when dark energy does creep in. And, and it may in sessions like when I, I was depleted, I tend to get very depleted when I myself, I'm going through a session. I feel like so much energy is going through me. And at the end, there's not much left in the glass and it's empty and there's a bit of a vacuum and different energies could kind of fill that vacuum. Um, so it, it's something to imagining that love, having other people aware of that love, having practitioners aware of that love when that situation comes in, just such a beautiful golden nugget of wisdom. Well, and it is. And, and I'm glad you brought that up, Kaya, because like you said, a lot of people get hung up on that and what, you know, we we want to help people understand is these negative things, just like everything else, is just part of you and things that you've created and you're bringing to you. And like you said, you're in that depleted state and it's like it's coming and, and that's conscious stuff. It may be fears. It may be whatever, you know, coming in and trying to fill in that space and it just takes on the persona of this whatever, ugly monster or something, you know, but it's just, but like, like you said, just it's always been about just embrace it, just love it, and then it'll show you why it's there. It'll show you whatever it is it's got to teach you or to uh, help you with or whatever. But yes, seeing that it's nothing to be feared. It's all love. So exactly, <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> but you know, I think that's really an important message to get across because people can get, you know, when they're thinking about doing a session, you know, they can be like, oh my gosh, you know, somebody told me I have an attachment or something I'm like, oh, okay, okay, let's, let's go ask about it, you know, and what we find out in these sessions is that all we are is love. And if, if there's something that we're feeling like that, it's usually just something that we feel more comfortable making be outside of us. Um, you know, attacking us, making us a victim so we can go into that victim mode. But time and time again, when they're in that beautiful deep state of relaxation, they will always be shown and, and understand that it's just a fear of theirs that they're putting outside. And, you know, when your energy is low or you're having a down day, you know, you're more, um, you will play in that field, I think, a little bit more. And But if you can remind yourself to either just stay neutral or blast it with love, it turns everything around so much faster. And you don't have to play the role of the victim anymore. That is that is so yesterday. I'm like so over fear. <laughs> you know, that like. Was I just, 2016. It, it, is, it <laughs> is. I just want to be working from love at this point. And then you, you know, like we were talking about earlier with the choices that we make in our decisions each day. We can, um, you know, see everything with with a positive frame to it, 
And when you do that, you keep your vibration, and your frequency high, and you just attract more and more of that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you want to be grouchy. Okay. But why, you know, when you can have this easy, easy solution to blasting everything with love and feeling the reverberations come back to you. Exactly. Exactly. And we're going to get low on time here really quickly. So really before we do, and I'll, we'll talk again as soon as you guys give out your contact information. That's what I want you to do is let people know how they can reach you if you would like to do that. Sure. So. Um, my website is uh, Suzanne Spooner, QHHT.com. Pretty easy. Um, and all of my contact information is there as well. Okay. And Kaya? And I'm Kaya. Um, I'm sorry. I am Kaya Wittenberg. That is my name. And... Uh, <laughs> Got that part right. Yeah, I know that. Uh, and um, my website is pastliferegressionqhht.com. And you're located in Miami. I am located in yeah, Miami. Yeah, you did say that. You did say that a while ago. So, yeah. Uh, South Beach. Hey, that that's probably a fantastic <laughs> location for session. It's, it's a great location. <laughs> yeah. That's probably right up there with. Now, and now how did you guys do during the uh, hurricane? Uh, luckily, um, it swerved off. There was, I, I've been traveling for the last nine weeks, so I haven't been home for quite some time. Uh, I, I'm coming back tomorrow though, so I'll get to survey everything, but it, it veered off. So we had that, I don't know, nine days of watching that hurricane slowly coming and then everybody thinking they evacuated the entire island. They had curfews, they had everything in place. Um, so I was checking in with some friends constantly that were actually staying through it. And, um, and it veered off, so the damage was was minimal. But it's, it's been much worse in other places. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that's, and we send our love to everyone through every all these different things that are happening um, very quickly. That's actually that brings up a, um, you know, another topic we can discuss very quickly is things that are going on because there are a lot of earth things happening and that can bring the fear out in a lot of people and maybe that's part of the reason for it is to get that out there so we can deal with it but also see there again that's another thing just send it love send everyone love and every and uh, and even the earth love and i mean she's going through her things too and uh, as far as uh, you guys have any ideas very quickly on on maybe what you know like like part of what this is or well, I think it's all just a reflection, um, you know, inward and outward of, you know, the chaos outside is the chaos inside. And, you know, we have to come in and find our peace. And, you know, all this craziness that's happening around the world, you know, through nature, through politics, through everything is um, giving us a chance to really wake up and take a very strong look at things that we used to let just kind of fly by us and, and not pay attention to. And then in the end, it really is about coming in and finding your, your peace and your serenity and then exuding that outward. So, you know, it, it's all a within without scenario as far as I see. And, and I think we're right on track and everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And that we're just escalating this great momentum for the shift. Yes. And, and, and to add further onto that, I would say this: this is a great opportunity we're, because of what we're seeing in the world right now. We're seeing a lot of things that don't feel right. We're seeing a lot of things that aren't our preferred way. When you see divisiveness and you see people getting into their national little groups and saying it's us against them, that, that's not what, our, what the soul wants. That's not what our spirits want. We, want. we want to be together. We want to share energy. We don't want to be competitive. We want to be collaborative collaborative for the greater good mm -hmm. what this is is an opportunity for us to see this is what absolutely we don't want and we can change it to what we do want and it's bringing us all together by showing us very clearly here you are mm, this is not so good let's choose this let's <laughs> ascend let's not descend so it's all it's an all an opportunity and it's it's showing itself right now it's a it's a huge transition point from the earth and but we could have another hour long session about this of what's actually happening right now with uh, geez, light energy coming here and beings coming down to help us and, and the ascension process and how the, our fears need to come to the surface right now. Everything needs to come to the surface so that it is out and cleansed and it's out there. And then we can really be who we really are and, and enjoy that to the fullest 
free of all these things that are holding us down. Right. And then that's, you know, that's been said for a long time. It's like when all this, when stuff starts happening, that we need to be these, these solid points, these solid foundations. It's like, that's where, when we know who we are, because we've done all this releasing, whatever, then like you said, we're the calm in the storm, you know, we're the, we're those um, points it's like the beacons of light. Those are the points that these others can gravitate to for to get their understanding and everything. So that's what that's been said in a long time. And now it's happening. And it's really cool to, to see. I mean, we're here, we're now. I mean, like mom always said, we're this is the greatest time to be alive. <laughs> and it is. You know, we're that's on the greatest show universe. of the universe. So mm-hmm. um I, I haven't gotten a message yet from Don, but I believe we're probably right there at time. So um, I would like to go ahead and would uh, if you want to go ahead and I love to say the parting message, you know, like the SC does. <laughs> would you like to give uh, a message to everyone real quick before we say good night? Uh, My message would, would just be no fear. No fear. All love. Love it. Yes. <laughs> And follow love, follow your passions, do what makes you happiest, focus on what makes you happiest, recognize what makes you happiness and go towards it. If you relentlessly go towards what makes you happy, you will get the results you're looking for. Connect yourself with the people that make you feel good, connect, deepen those relationships. That's what it's really all about. Just like you guys. Yes, the besties here. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And again, thank you both for being here with me on, on the show. And this has been fantastic. Um, I love you both and I can't wait to actually physically be with you again. Um, I I know our energy is always together. So, um, but anyway, to everyone out there, thank you for being with us also. Um, I always feel you and we are all, I know we're all sending love. So um, good night, everyone, and till next week. Love you. All right. Good night. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour. If you enjoyed this show, please like it below and share it with your friends. Oh, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to hear more. Thank you so much.